today's lesson is taken from the book of Revelations, chapter 21, 1 through 8. Chapter 21 there. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more. And John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither there shall be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers, idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death. <clears throat> this morning we're going to be talking, <clears throat> excuse me, about um, Brother Matt and his lesson, invitation last Wednesday, uh, made a comment. For the last two years, going on the third year now, we faced a dilemma that's encompassed the whole world. Everybody, I mean, I'm talking children, everyone. It, it's altered everything that we, we set out to do, uh, and it's taken its toll, and it's still doing it. And, and it's one of those things, it's a dilemma that enters into every conversation, every time you talk to somebody, every time you get together, every, it's always brought up. It's a subject that's constantly... But there's something that's more important than that. <clears throat> and we need to look at that in reality. This morning, it's going to affect everyone as well as this virus. But it's something that we need to face and, and just seem to kind of put it aside. We worry about the cares of, of the day more than we do about the cares of our souls. So we're going to be looking at something today. <clears throat> and <clears throat> what we're talking, going to talk about is journeys. Every time that somebody gets up and make announcements, just like this morning, Brother Zach, well, Rick and Sue, they're in, they're in Columbus, and, and so and so is attending here with their parents down in Moundsville. And I, it's on and on. It's somebody has gone someplace all the time. <clears throat> and you know, when we go on these journeys, it's inevitable that we get preparation. If you're going, I mean, I mean there's endless. This group here, I'm not talking about the whole community. I'm just talking about what I'm looking out on right now. Somebody goes someplace all the time, and it's not like, as mentioned this morning in the Bible study, 30 miles from here to Cambridge. Well, and back, if you live down there and come here to worship, that's 60 miles. Well, that uh, the queen there was making 20 to 25 miles in a day. So a journey to us, it's, and to them, like Paul and his missionary travels 12, 1400 miles that he encompassed, maybe years of doing that, depending on how long he located. We do that. We, we'll, we'll, we'll go to, just like these boys go to these ball games. they'll drive Cincinnati, watch a ball game, turn around, drive back 600 miles. It's nothing. A journey to us is nothing. But we go on these trips. Whether it's going, we want to go someplace that we we feel like it. Uh, it's someplace we've never seen. It's a someplace. It's serene. It, it's beautiful. It, it's it, it's enchanting. And maybe it's been told by us by somebody else, and you ought to go there. So we we don't hesitate to gather our stuff up. 
but we don't take these trips. We take medication if we need it. We call ahead, we make reservations for our automobiles, we need rental cars, we, our lodging and all, and our plane tickets and other way to get the best one. It's a year ahead, we plan these things. Listen, we're headed on a trip some of these days. I don't care if it's the smallest one back there or if it's the oldest, we're headed on a one-way trip. Are you making reservations for that trip? That's the one that's more meaningful than any trip you're going to take. And you where I said it before, we're all going to the same place. You go there, I go here, we go, but we're all going right to the same place. The judgment seat of God. It's inevitable. That's a trip you're going to make. Why are you going to make? Because Hebrews 9 and 27 tells me, as is as appointed unto man once to die, and after this comes a judgment. And 2 Corinthians 5 and 10 there tells us, we'll be judged according to the things we have done in this body, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And the reason why I want to thank Brother Mike for that re uh, reading that lesson, you want to keep your minds and your thoughts on what he read there. There's first few chapters there in, in Revelations 21 and start with verse 9 sometime and read on down through that. You'll get the meaning of what we're talking about here this morning. So we're going to be taking these, uh, these routine journeys, I can say, from time and time. But we've got to have our GPSs. We've got to have our automobiles. Most of them today are fixed so that you just flip a few buttons there. And they'll take you right here, right there. And here's your destination. Get out. That's all you got to do. I mean, I'm going to tell you, it's, a mir it's miraculous, but there's maps. That's just, it covers this country like a blanket. But you ever stop and think, as we've been studying in our Bible study, there's a man years ago, his name was Abram. He lived in Ur of Chaldees. And that's a place, if you know anything about history, it's close to where the Garden of Eden was supposedly at. But that's a fertile it's in the, what they call the Fertile Crescent. Now, all around here is arid, hard to grow, like the Gary's talking about the sand and the camels and all that was there. But the Fertile Crescent's over here, and that's where, and that's where Abram came from. But God come to him, and he said at, uh, to Abram, he said, uh, you've got to get out of this country. He said, you take, your, take you, your parents, whatever is necessary, and leave this country. And he said, I'll tell you where you, where I want you to go. Well, he didn't, and listen, that man was set, was basically had to be in, in the neighborhood around 70 years old. So he left there and he went up to Haran, up here, way up here. He stayed there for a short time. God, come on, keep going. He said, I promised you a land. So he goes down to Shechem. S-C-H-E-C-H-E-M. And he lives there for a while. Then a great famine hit the land. A famine hit the land. So, once again, he was told to move on. Listen, he didn't have no roadmaps. He didn't have anything. He was totally dependent on God to take him. So he goes down into Egypt. And he stays there for a short time. Well, then he journeys back. Because God said, that's not the land I promised you. And I promised you, you'll be a father of many nations. And there's a lot of things going to transpire. So it, uh, move on with this story. So he moves, he comes back. And in the process, he was given a son. He gave actually two sons. But we know the one he was given was, was the one that we need to know about. His name was Isaac. And then from Isaac came who? Two sons. One of them was a the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. So, in the same process, over a period of years, here he goes. A famine hits the land, he has to go down and eat. He takes 70 descendants with him. And then over 400 and some years, as Brother Gary mentioned in the Bible study, they multiplied to the millions. Pharaoh got anxious, get them out of here. So, in other words, so they did. God, once again, no roadmap, God depending on God, and they followed him. He crossed, parted the waters. He led them 40 years in the wilderness. 
guided by a cloud the day and a pillar of fire by night. That's it. But he kept on with evil. And he crossed another body of water and they went into the promised land. So that tells me you can either take your roadmaps that mankind formulates and you can use them to the best your ability, which is good. But you better warn you on that. You better think of that plan that God's given us. It's going to leave, because he says it's a temporal thing. Flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's what the scriptures tell us. So you better find out what God wants us to do. How are you going to do that? So. You read your Bibles. You read your Bibles. What does James say? 4, 13 through 15. <laughs> Today or tomorrow, I'll go to such and such a city, I'll buy and sell and make guinea. He said, what is your life? He said, your life is like a vapor that appears for only a little while and then it vanishes away. So we ought to say, if God wills, we will do this or that. Well, we're always planning on what we're going to do tomorrow to buy and to sell and to make gain. Temporal things. That's where we set our sights, and we're all guilty of that. <clears throat> but we better start reading your Bibles <clears throat> and see what it says. It says that the days of our years are those of three score and ten, and if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it soon be cut off, and we all fly away. Psalms 9 and 10. <clears throat> so, we know that we're going to be traveling on to the next lifetime. But you know, back in that story when Gary was talking this morning, in 2 Samuel 12 and 23, there was an incident that took place with Solomon's father. His name was David. And he was involved with a beautiful woman. Not by her choosing, but his choosing. He was overcome by the lust of the flesh. So he got tied up in that. And there's a child come forth from this, from this union. But God told him that child will not live. He already knew it ahead of time a child will not live. So here as, and, and the child died and David in his remorse. <clears throat> it's what he said. But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? He said, I shall not go to him. But he, but he, but he said, I, I shall go to him, but he shall not come to me. In other words, it's a one-way ticket. Once we're out of here, we're gone. We're not coming back. And just like we go on them trips, we forget something, turn that bus around. I forgot this or I forgot that. And you'll drive back and get it. You're not turning that bus around. And you're headed out of here. It's a one-way ticket. And that's why it said to take everything, be prepared to meet thy God, O Israel. Solomon said, or David said to Solomon there, as he is about to hand the things over to Solomon, he said, I go the ways of all the earth. There in 1 Kings 2, 1 and 2, it tells us that. In Ecclesiastes, that same Solomon said, all go to one place, all are the dust, and all turn to the dust again. Job, in his time of remorse, when he was being tested to Satan there, he said, before I go, whence I shall not return, even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. The land of darkness is darkness itself, and of the shadow of death without any order, and where the light is as darkness. You read that story there, uh, pertaining to uh, what, uh, where Mike left off, you're not going to find any darkness in heaven. It's going to be light. But if you go to the other place where you don't want to go, it's going to be dark. Believe me, and when Gary mentioned dark as a coal mine, that's not even close to what it's going to be like. Because that scriptures tells me when he says, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And I can't imagine, we can't even imagine what that fearful is to fall into the hands of God. It's going to be something that we will not 
really be able to comprehend. <clears throat> so I'm going to read you a little story here. <clears throat> there was in Luke, the 16th chapter, verses 19 through 30, or 19 in that area, 30. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in, fine, in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at the gates of full of sores. And desiring to feed the, be fed the crumbs with which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thee good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, and now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and there is a great gulf fix, so that they which pass, which they would, would pass from hence to you cannot neither and they passed to us and would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would ascend him into my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come unto this place of torment. But Abraham said unto them, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. So, what well, I'm telling you, if you read that, what Mike said, you know, with all this, with all this pain and anguish and torment and fear that we're going through at this time. What did it say there in that reading, that reading about the next, the last verse that Mike said, there won't be no pain, no sorrow, no sickness, no dying there. What's that place going to be? That sounds like heaven to me. Because if you read right on through, you start with verse nine and you read that and you go on and, and encompass the next chapter, which is what close of the book to tell you about heaven description only one that you'll find in the bible a description of what heaven's going to be like there's not going to be any pain there's got it's going to be like it's going to be wonderful but what did that man say go back and tell my brother you don't want to come to this place he didn't say you might want he said no go back and tell him so that tells you that hell is one place we don't want to go. Reason why all scripture, and he says there, all scripture in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, says all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, so that the man of God may be perfectly, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And he said, sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. John 17 and 17. That word is a truth. And these things happen. You best believe them. Everything that's happening has come to pass. One way or the other. Prophecy fulfilled. Prophecy fulfilled. Prophecy. And that's exactly what's going to happen to us. We're going to stand in front of the Lord. He said your every knee is going to bow. And every knee is going to confess me. That I am Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Why not do that now? Because. It's inevitable. It's coming. Acts 4 and 12 tells us there's no other name given under heaven whereby man can be saved than Jesus Christ. <laughs> that is it. And how do we get it? How do we, how do we know we need to get it? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me, John 14 says. Earlier in that same line, he said, I go to the fair place for you, and when I come again, I will receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Father, my father's house, and their mansions. We want to go there, or do we want to go where that man said, You don't want to come here? But you know what that takes? That takes preparation, that takes a little time. But the first thing you better do is do what Jesus said. Not a hard task, not a formidable thing. 
Hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized for the remission of sins. And Jesus will live with you. You are ready to cross that. 23rd Psalm, there, the fourth verse, what's that say? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they come. Jesus is with you, brother, but he's, if he said you're either for me or you're against me. There's no other way. There's no way. What he say? There was a great golf fix between the two. You can't get across. Once you're there, you're there. It's permanent. It's eternal. And I'm not trying to scare nobody, but it's coming. And you think, well, I got so much, so much hope. This disaster thing we deal with, it will store you. I read obituaries in Rope County. It's about the only paper I get anymore because they stopped everything else. But I get that obituary and I look in there and there's people and it's full, a little tiny paper, six pages. It's got a half a dozen, seven or eight people in there every week. Man dying. We're going to die because it's appointed. And Solomon said, you have one generation will pass away and another will come on. We have a baby. Sarah has one this year. Well, short and fall back. I don't mean it's going to end. But I'll tell you one. It's going to end for us. Each and every individual in here. But it don't have to end. Live on. I was going to mention that Darren to sing that song. That's one of my favorites. I'll live on. But you can only live on in the Lord. If you're outside that circle of safety, and that's the reason why. Take a quick this morning because the weather is going to get tired on us. Jeff mentioned that Wednesday night. Let's try to keep on moving on through this. I tell you, you just say so much. There's no use of pleading and talking. You just say so much. If you want to hear, they're going to respond. If they don't, they're going to plug their ears and say, we should shut up. But here's what I'm saying. Jesus give us. When he died on that cross. He overcame the last thing. He overcame death. Death no more has its strength or hold on us. We can live on eternity. We can die with me. Because flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God. Anything that's corruptible will not inherit. <coughs> Those that are alive when the Lord comes back. Will not die them, but they'll be changed in the twinkling of an eye, as the scripture said. How? I don't know. Nobody else knows. But they'll, because of your flesh and blood will not inherit. But if you're, if you're here, I will tell you one thing. If you're outside that circle of safety, you can turn to God in prayer. Because he said, effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man failed. He said, pray for one another, confess your faults in other words, one another, that you may be healed. Effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man feels much. James 5 16 tells us that. But corrupt, we say righteous man. But why? Because <clears throat> Roman letter tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we're they're sinners. And if you're outside that circle of safety, you can't turn to God. He's forgiven you sins. He hears the righteous. But like Jeff or Mike, he indicated who he's going to hear and who's not going to hear. You know, this cut this year past. <clears throat> There's a lot of things happen. And we always make resolutions. Well, I'm packing a few more than I ought to. I'm going to, I'm going to take some of this off. I drink too much uh, 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 Coke or something like that, and I'm going to stop doing that. So maybe if you're going to uh, 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 cigarette habit, you, well, I'm going to back off on the cigarettes. Well, you ever look <clears throat> what you really want to do? Uh, that's just like I said, that's a temporal study. That's for these physical things we're dealing with every day. What's it say? These are all going to pass. They're going to pass. You need to hear from the spiritual thing. Now you get your Bibles out. Just for time. Have you read your Bible? Well, you look at Galatians fifth chapter there, right down there at the bottom of that, of that chapter. It tells you works of the flesh. You look at this. Am I practicing or am I involved in any of these things? Really? Do you think am I just on borderline with some of this stuff? I'm going to withdraw. I'm going to back off. Well, that's my New Year's resolution. I'm going to start doing it. Going down here just a little bit further, he gives the fruits of the spirit. You, I want to tell you one thing. You're gonna stop doing these, then you better start doing these. 
Because 50, 50 don't get it. He wants 100% of us. So if you're, if you're practicing the, the fruits of the spirit, as long as you're denying the works of the flesh, then you're headed in the right direction. That's a New Year's resolution you want to take. Because you know why? Because it's not just a deal with what I'm going to do this year. It's dealing with eternity. That's working on your soul of salvation. You're headed in the right direction. So you better start doing that. that that's a resolution you want to take. So, I just about concludes what I got to say this morning. I appreciate the attention, everybody. But I can only encourage you, life marches on. The three storm ten, I passed that. Gary's passed that. Several years passed that. Buy out and good tricks, you know. We're living on. But I don't say we're going to walk back through them doors next Wednesday night. If virus going on, that means that maybe possibility that you might inherit that. You're not able to come back. You're not able to get in front of the good audience of people and confess that you can Christ the Son of God. You better think about that. You've got an opportunity. Because the wages of sin, Romans 6 and 23, is death. And I'm not talking about this death of God. I'm talking about eternal death. You'll not be there with God in the well. The sin will not be in the kingdom of God in heaven. So if you're subject to God's call, you want to keep in mind that if you've done something or said something contrary, you're, you're a member of the Lord's church and you just feel like you're just, you need the prayer of your brothers. You know what he said there in James 5, 16, confess your faults one another, pray for one another, you might be healed. That's what we need to do. If you're subject to God call, you've got to hear, believe, repent, confess at time. The worst way of sin. But rise and walk in the newness of life. 2022. So if you're subject, this time come forward by the same thing.